Okay, so the, for the first part of completing the square, I just want you guys to put your pencils down and we're going to do a lot of conceptual thinking right now. Okay? And many of you may say, oh, I don't want to do this, but by the end of this lesson, you're really going to visualize what you're supposed to be doing rather than just trying to pull out those steps. Okay? Alright, so let's talk about this for a second. So I need all of Connor, sit up. Thank you. I need all of your attention. Brian, sit up, pay attention. Everybody sit up. Thank you. I need your attention, guys. This isn't a time to zone out just because I'm not making you right. Okay? Alright, so yesterday this is what you guys talked about with the sub. X squared equals 9. How do I figure out how to solve for X? We do the inverse operation, right? If you have a square, if you apply a square root to both sides, then you can solve for X. So in this case, X equals plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, which means X equals plus or minus 3. Did the sub explain to you why it's plus or minus? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So that works out well? Yes. Yeah. So you know that negative 3 squared is the same as 3 squared. Since both of those work, we have to consider both cases. So how would I do this one? What if I have x minus 2 squared equals 9? Square root it. Take the square root. When I take the square root of both sides, I get x minus 2 equals plus or minus 3. What, Patrick? So both of these cases are x minus 2 equals positive 3 or x minus 2 equals negative 3, correct? Everybody okay so far? This was yesterday. How would I solve these two? Anthony? Add 2 to everything. Okay, so this is review. So x either equals 5 or x equals negative 1. What does that mean? I have two answers. Two answers to what? More than that, Armando. More than that. What have we been working with? What have we been doing? What happens when we have two answers that say x equals something? What does that usually reference? Andrew? When I normally, in the last month that we've been doing now, it's a point on the graph. Exactly. Where on the point on where is the point on the graph? On the x axis. What do we, there we go right there. It's called a root. So if I had a graph and I told you that x equals 5 and x equals negative 1, we would call those our roots, right? So this parabola is either going to be smiling or frowning, which takes me to my next part of my problem. What if I told you that these two things are the same thing. What's the factored form of 12? 3 and 4? Could I write that like this? This is the factored form of this. How do we normally factor things when I see a trinomial like this? What method do we use? We use the box method. Good. So let's do the box method for it. What goes up here? And what goes here? Do we know what goes in here? 
How do you know that? Because Armando knows what he's doing. Okay, if you didn't know that, Armando, what would you do? You'd say A times C, which is 4x squared. Good job. And this is the basement. What goes down here? What? Negative 4x. So what two numbers? When I multiply, I get 4x squared, but when I add them, I get negative 4x. Negative 2x and negative 2x, which is a clue. When I factor this, what do I get? What goes here? X and X. X times what makes negative 2X? Negative 2. What times X makes negative 2X? Negative 2. Huh. So isn't the factored form of that X minus 2 times X minus 2 equals 9? Doesn't that match that? Okay, yeah. so today's lesson is being able to go from here and saying that's a perfect square right there. I don't even need to factor it. I can tell you right now it's a perfect square. I'm going to show you how to do that with algebra tiles. If you guys have been moaning and groaning about algebra tiles this whole time, and finally I'm going to show you how algebra tiles can finally, since you've been working with them so much, you should understand exactly what I'm going to do right now with E. And when I show you how to do it the long way, you're going to say, why do we have to do it that way? The way that you did it is so much easier. Okay. Let's look at this first problem right here. Again, nobody needs to be writing. If I were to use algebra tiles to display this problem, I'd put an x squared here, right? How could I display two x's? Where would you put those? So I'd put one here. Where would the other one go? You'd put it here, under it. And if I were to complete the square, I would have a 1 right there. See that? Mm -hmm. I just completed the square. x times x, 1 times 1. So this is actually x plus 1 squared. Do the next one. I've got an x squared. Oh no, I just lost power. I've got an x squared. How would you set that four, the four x's up? Let me pause this. Okay, so I have an x squared here. Who can visualize it? What needs to go over here? Two x's. Good. And what would go down here? Two x's. So how would this fill in here? Four. Then what would this be? Two. If you don't get it yet, don't worry. You will. X and X. One and one x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x. x times 1 is x. 1 times x is x. 1 times x is x. Right? Just like a multiplication table. So I've got x plus 2 times x plus 2 makes x squared plus 4x plus 4. Let's try this one. What would go here? Can you visualize it yet? You guys almost have it. You're thinking, I can see the wheels turning. Do you need more visual? If the x squared is here, good job. Wouldn't you, what have we been doing with this one? The 2x, didn't we split it up? With this one, didn't we split the 4x's up? So wouldn't I split that 6x up, 3 and 3? And when you have 3 and 3, they make... 9. Right? So, ch another challenge. X plus what? Squared. 3, right? Because it would be an X, a 1, 1, 1. X and 1, 1, 1. Are light bulbs starting to go on? I've got more for you. 
Good job. Good job, Elgin. 36 is right. How did you do that? How did you do that? You visualize 6 on this side and 6 on this side, right? And if you had 6 times 6, it would make 36. About this one. Good job, guys. And this one? 100. Well, let's factor them. A little bit more difficult. What goes here? Negative 6. These are negative. Negative 12x makes negative 6x's, and negative 6x's makes negative 12x's. About here. And what about here? So what is the pattern for C? How did I find each one of those? I was finding C. It isn't not kind of like squaring. You were squaring, but you did something before you squared it. You cut it in half and divided. Or you cut it, you divided by two, and you squared it. Right? Okay. Let's try some more. No, we don't have time for whiteboards today. <coughs> what goes here? This one's harder. One. Two divided by two is one. One times one is one. Goes here. What goes here? Good job. You guys got it. Okay, I'm going to skip this over here. Okay, what do I do with these? Do you really need the box? Visualize it. Is it already a perfect square? So what would this one be? Look at Vanessa. Good job. Good job. What about this one? Tell me exactly what to put. Right? And if I further solve these, what am I finding, guys? I cut it in half is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. What am I finding? When I solve for x, what am I actually finding? I'm not just doing a problem. That's not what we're doing. We're finding the, not the square root, but the root. The roots of what? A graph of what? A parabola. Good job. <laughs> Good job, guys. What about these? A box? I tell you one thing. You're right. You would start with a box because I don't see a perfect square. Are those both perfect squares? No. But I'll tell you right now, if you use a box, it's not going to work. It's not going to factor. It's not going to factor. In this case, this is why we come to this point, because you guys know how to factor with a box, right? Now you know how to find perfect squares. Well, if it's not a perfect square, my objective today is to get you, let's make it a perfect square. No, some of them won't be perfect. How could I make this a perfect square? First of all, I say to myself, well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. Is that a 9? Let's make it a 9. How am I going to do that? You're on the right track. If I add 7 to both sides, I could get rid of that 7 right there, right? So I'm going to say x squared plus 6x plus blank equals 7 plus blank. My first objective, is that the same equation? Are these two equivalent? Why? Because there's an equal sign, and didn't I add 7? If I give 7 to you and 7 to you, is it still equal? Yeah. It is. So we're still following the rules of algebra, right? Okay. Now you guys can do this pretty easy. What number goes here? 9. But I can't just give 9 to her and not to him. So what do I need to do? Give 9 to the other side. Now what's this in factored form? 
X plus 3 squared equals 15. Great job. Let's do the homework. Do this one. I haven't even gotten to where how the other teachers teach you guys. This is my visual. This is conceptually doing it. Okay, you guys are all excited. Do the plus 4. Okay, good. X squared minus 2X plus blank equals 4 plus What goes here? 1. Right? Because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. And what goes here? And what's the factor form of this? X minus 1 equals 5. Because this is a negative 2x. Right? So if you were to visualize that, you'd have 1 negative x on one side and 1 negative x on the other side, right? Okay. Now let's go to notes. Get your notes out. Okay, so what was our first step of this whole process? I look at this, I say, is it a perfect square, folks? Yes. It's not a perfect square. So what do we need to do? Add the 5 to both sides or move the constant to the right side. I'm kind of going to do that up here at the top in a different color. And then say x squared minus 4x. The biggest, the most common mistake in completing the square is right here. Students always remember to fill in C there, but they forget to add it on the other side. So I always put a blank there so that I don't forget to add it to both sides. Because we have to keep it even. Patrick, do you need to put that on my desk? What's my next step? Find out what C is. Correct? So that's our next step. Find C. I'm going to formally show you how we find C. Somebody explain it to me. What, what did you do? Raziel, how do you figure out what C is? Explain it to me. Raziel. Is this not be fancy? What are you doing? Perfect. Take half of what? B. So I would take half of B divided by 2. What's that? That's negative 2, right? And what would I do with this negative 2? Square it. Which, coincidentally, well, it's not really a coincidence, is the factored form, which you'll see in just one second. Everybody agree? 4 would be our C? Mm -hmm. So what's our next step? Uh oh. Good thing there's a back button, right? Add C to both sides. So let's add C to both sides. X squared. Minus 4x plus 4 equals 5 plus what? 4. To add it to both sides. What is our next step? Adam and I think we can combine these two steps together. What are we going to do? Before we solve it, What do you want this to look like? <coughs> Somebody said it. I heard it. Factor. We need to factor. Factor and combine like terms. Yes, absolutely. Visualize it. You've got an x squared. What are you going to do with 4x? You're going to split it. Isn't splitting dividing by 2? Right? It makes more sense when you think about splitting it, right? 
you're going to split it, and then once you have, you've split and you put two x's on the other side and two x's on the bottom, don't you just say two times two, which is squaring? Exactly what we're doing. We divide by two and then we square. Okay, so to factor and combine like terms, look at this. When you write your steps out, magically what goes here? See that? Two goes there. It's that number that we squared. It's not a coincidence. It will always happen like that. What happened? Yes, you always square it. Isn't that what we did back here? Didn't we always square it? See it? We're always squaring. We split it, which means dividing by two, and then we squared it. Split it, squared it. Split it, squared it. Bless you. Okay, what's the next step? No. Can't put it on the graph yet. We have x minus 2 squared equals 9. What do we do with that? Not there, there are squared. What do we do? What's the inverse of squaring? Thank you. We're going to take the square root of both sides. It baffles me that you guys will ask me all year long if what we're doing in class is your homework. <laughs> Come on, be honest. Don't I hear that at least, at yeah. least once a week, if not more than once a week? Okay, yes. This is what your homework will look like. That's a good idea. I should just put it on the board. Okay, so now I need to, what's my last step? We're basically going to solve. So I have x minus to equals what? Three. Three or x minus two equals negative three. When I solve for that, well, you don't you don't want to do that with this because you're actually going to get two different answers, right? Make sense? So what are my two answers? X equals 5, or X equals negative 1. And what does that look like? The roots of a graph. Is this graph smiling or frowning? Why is it smiling? Who can tell me in a complete sentence why the graph would be smiling or being positive? Anthony, thank you for raising your hand. No. No. Armando, thank you for raising your hand. Well, can question after? Yes, Elgin. The coefficient of x squared is positive. Good job, Elgin. Good job. Yes, that deserves an applause. Okay, Armando, what was your question? Why would there be only one root? If it's only touching the x once. Good job. Good job. When would you have no answer? When would there be no root? When it's not touching the x after it. Good job, guys. Okay. All right. I think on these, no, because we're actually, we're completing the square on these. So it will, there will be a solution. That's a good question, Armando. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop here and let you start your homework. But right before I let you start your homework, because sometimes when you guys, that doesn't mean start putting things away, okay? Before you guys do that, let me start off. Uh, sometimes when you see things that don't look in the exact way that you were presented them, you think you're stuck. X squared minus 4x equals 12. What do I do with that? The 12 is over. Alex, thank you for raising your hand. Good job, Alex. You have to wait your turn.
Just because you raise your hand doesn't mean you're going to get called on, but I do appreciate it. You put blanks there, right? Just because there's not a space doesn't mean you can't create one, right? Okay, let's do our homework.